can if somebody in the line over will have seats at this time, please.
States Army, and a grateful nation, please accept this flag as a symbol of our appreciation for your loved one's honorable and faithful service. Yeti Sukal from the shul. We gather together today to pay tribute to Sydney. We begin with these words of comfort from the 23rd Psalm. The Nairo Elo Esar Binote Sheyar Bitsaini Ame Nuchot Yenahaleni Nashi Shobet 
גם כן יהיה במעגלי צדק למען שמו, גם כי ילך בגיץ על מוות, לא יירא רע כי אתה עמדי. God is my shepherd, I shall not want. God makes me lie down in green pastures, leads me beside still waters, and restores my soul. You lead me in right paths for the sake of your name. Even when I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You have set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy <laughs> shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of God forever. To Ellen and Neil, Karen, and to all the family, and to Sid's community of friends, so many of you here today, we know that you grieve in a darkened world. And in your silence, there is sadness. Sid was blessed with a long and fruitful and fulfilling life. And we celebrate that and we are thankful and grateful for that. And we still grieve. That's the challenge of mourning. To grieve and to grieve fully, particularly in these first few days. These are times of tears and sadness, times of memory and reflection. And the challenge is that in the midst of all that, we reach deep into our souls to find the strength and the ability to also be grateful and to offer our gratitude for Sid's life, a life that was so well lived. You, Sid's children, are surrounded today by your families, by your friends, by your parents' friends, and we gather with you to comfort and console you. And we gather with you also that we might call upon God on your behalf, that you might feel God's loving presence and be comforted by this. From the author John Gunther, the influence, the impact of a person continues to exert itself long after mortal bonds have broken. Not only that he lives on in our hearts or in anything that he truly touched, but that a person transmits permanently something of what he was to all of us. The fabric of the universe is continuous and eternal. met Rita and they got married a few years later and they enjoyed 53 if I have the number right 53 years of marriage before her death of course they created a family and from the three of you you went on to provide your parents with six grandchildren and they're doing their part and you are blessed so far with five great-grandchildren for your dad. I'm going to skip reading all of the names. You know who you are and you know who the great-grandchildren are. And I want to remember also today Sid's hundred-year-old sister Stella, who I believe is in Florida. You know, they say that children are our investment in the future and grandchildren the interest on that investment. It's a good dividend. Great-grandchildren, some kind of wild compound interest. A 
we know that when we die, we leave everything material behind. What survives us is the crown of our good name. But the rabbis say some people and the way they lived and the way they loved, the relationships they built and sustained, they earned for themselves the Keter Shem Tov, the crown of a good name. Sid's crown of a good name lives on with all of you, his descendants. And it lives on in all who knew him. That with every joke we make, with every kindness we perform for another person, we carry the crown of Sid's good name into the future. We pay tribute to his memory and we honor his life. We have several family members this afternoon who are going to share reflections and I'd like to begin by calling on Karen. sharing one baseball mitt with a group of friends to becoming a grandfather. 
He'd say he never thought he'd live to see them all get bar and bat mitzvah, but certainly not become college graduates and some get married and have children. Never thought that was in the cards. Even when he was heartbroken and somewhat lost when mom died, he was pleasantly surprised that he could go on and spend many appreciated years with Cheryl and his Florida friends. Whatever he was adult, he found many pleasant surprises around the corner. Perhaps that's why a family friend coined him the Bulldog, because he hung on, and others called him a legend because he kept going, smiling along the way with an attitude you aspire to possess. I'm hoping that another surprise is embracing Dad right now. He pretty much thought it's lights out when you die, but I think he's awakened to my mom and all, all the guys who passed before him who are there to greet him. Uncle Jerry joking, took you long enough, Uncle Freddie putting on some jazz and laughing. Uncle Vic with his warm smile showing him all the ropes. Beanie, Gimpy, Cooper, Joe, and many others gathering around and hugging him. Dad will really love that surprise. To be so loved by your children, fully known and loved by your adult grandchildren, creating a legacy for the many you leave behind. Yes, Dad, you had a good ride and a wonderful life. I love you. Hello, everybody. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Rabbi. Special thanks to people came from quite a distance. Mary and Kirk. My bodyguard, Aaron. Josh and Lindsay. I think everyone wanted to postpone to stay as long as possible. Here we are. So we're going to celebrate his life. They say dying in your 30s is tragic. As his 40s, sympathy dissipates from there. 50s, such a shame. 60s is too soon. 70s, a good run. And 80s is a life well lived. 90s, that's a fucking hell of a rock. <laughs> <laughs> I hope by now my dad, I'll be disappointed if he's not, if my Uncle Jerry didn't pick him up in the Cornish convertible with uh, Freddie monitoring the music, Uncle Vic. Amy, Kimmy, the gang, all having fun, and uh, like I said, uh, thanks again for everyone coming. I do love the fact that not only my dad's last meal was a milkshake, but it was one that Joel picked up from his favorite East Coast customer, and it was a chocolate and peanut milkshake. Let's have a great time and celebrate a great man. Thank you. Love you guys. Yes, John and Zach to come forward. We're going to both up together. I think John will come first. Thank you, everybody, for coming today. It's a great honor. So, sorry, Grandpa. There would never be enough time in any given lifetime to measure how much I love Papa. The love I have for him will forever be stitched in my heart and will remain with me forever. Papa was my lifeline. We never fit the paradigm of grandpa and grandson, but we're two friends only generations apart. Even from an early age, Papa sought to know me as a person. He recognized my love for baseball. I was grateful for the opportunity to attend uh, Game 3 of the 97 World Series with Papa and travel with him to the National Baseball Hall of Fame just a few years later in Cooperstown. When I graduated from college, I, I moved back to Cleveland and Papa and I would speak several times a week, if not daily. And I always loved our Saturday lunches at the Beachmont Men's Grill. We would savor hot dog lentil soup while discussing life and sports. I, figure, I feared I would lose my compass, my Papa, when I moved to Cincinnati for a new opportunity. But to my amazement, we never skipped a beat. We developed a new ritual. I would call him and depending on the day, he would have set catchphrases like, well, hello, Levy, or good Shabbos, uh, or even call me the Cincinnati Kid. If, if it was an American holiday like Memorial Day, he would even say good Yontif. 
most of the time he wanted to know about my life in Cincinnati, whether asking about my work at P&G or my relationship with Allie. Uh, when Allie's family called me leftover Levy, Papa adapted that name as well. Papa's sense of humor always brought joy to my life and everyone around us. Uh, he would sing parodies of college fight songs like Bring On the Kosher Bacon telling stories of his days in East Liverpool, the Korean War, or even say silly Yiddish phrases that might not be appropriate to repeat here, uh, or recite Hebrew prayers without flaw. He was one of the most charming men I've ever known. People gravitated toward to him because of his magnetic energy. Everything great that has happened to my life is because of Papa Sissy. He believed in me and saw something in me I could uh, not always see, I know without fail, he was with me every time I looked at my phone in hopes I could call him just to hear his voice. Even though he is gone, I know our souls are sealed together from here to eternity. For Papa was my friend, my grandfather, and my heart. Loving him made me realize that when you love someone, you never are bound by space and time. <laughs> Though his generosity was limitless, uh, from countless uh, times in Florida, at his home in Florida, you cannot put a value on the priceless heart like his. There will never be another Papa or anyone who can replicate such a distinct, humorous, wise, and loving man. One of the greatest gifts that he loved me and our, one of the greatest gifts is that he loved me and our family unconditionally. When I last saw him on November 25th, we held each other's hands and and almost in unison said, I love you. Thank you, Papa, for teaching me how to love and how to love others. Often in life, we never get a love like Papa's that is more powerful and brighter than the sun and the stars. To be loved and to, be loved and to give love is one of the rarest gifts we have in life. Though we have to say goodbye to him today, I know he is not alone but with Mama Rita smiling down upon us, proud of the family they created. But for now, I will hold you in my heart, knowing that one day I will see you again and you will say, hello, Levy, and I will say, hello, Papa, forgetting that time had never been lost. Thank you.
We lucked out. Freddie will forever share a birthday with his big papa. I'll think of him each day, and the gift of his birthday will shine extra bright every November 6th. Be a friend. Sid is kind. He is good. What does good look like anyway? Who are we to characterize goodness? Sometimes people show you the answer to these questions. Their actions reveal what they're made of. Sid somehow always knew what to say. More importantly, he knew what to do. No one has a key to unlock the mysteries of living a great life. But Sid may be the closest thing to it. Living well and making an impact that I've ever seen. He's also unlocked so much for so many of us. He's changed people's lives, and his greatest work, I think he'd say, is the family he built with Rita. How he's with her again. His lovely Rita. Sid's all-time pantheon of movies, The Bridge on the River Kwai was up there. I'm going to end with a line from Alec Guinness' character, Colonel Nicholson, that I think Sid would like. Uh, one day, in a week, a month, a year, on that day when, God willing, we all return to our homes again, you're going to feel proud of what you've achieved here in the face of great adversity. What you've done should be I think will be an example to all our countrymen, soldier and civilian alike. You survive with honor, that and more, here in the wilderness. You have turned defeat into victory. I congratulate you. Well done. that life was good to us, but rather that we were good to life. We've heard beautiful tributes. I just want to add a few thoughts. I'm not going to review all of Sid's biography. You know it better than I do. <coughs> the successful law career of 60 plus years. And has been said over and over, he was so proud of his family. Just as the service was beginning, I don't remember, Joel, if you said it to Karen or vice versa, but as we were beginning the military honors, you said this was what was so important to Dad. He was very proud of his service. He was a lieutenant. And he was awarded a meritorious bronze star for, quote, leading an effective unit in combat against an armed enemy. It is a recognition and award given to fewer than 1% of those who served in the military. And he was proud of it, and all of you should be proud of what he did. days the family has received 
condolences from people all around, all of you here and from people all over the country. And I want to share two short pieces. One written by Susan Ritter, who was Sid's legal secretary for many years, and another from Jordan, his granddaughter, one of the grandchildren. I want to give Jordan the last word, so I will read what Susan wrote. I just wanted to pass my condolences along to you and to Joe Allen and Karen. I think he said this to you. My heart is broken that Sydney has passed. I will always cherish the fond memories I have of working with him. I met him when I was just a young girl who had recently lost her father, and he was so kind and sweet and about the age my father was. I looked up to him, and he became my surrogate father in a way. I learned so much working with him, and we all became a family. Anytime I think of Sid, I smile. I'm so taken by that last sentence. I think all of us should aspire that when we are gone, for everyone who knew us to be able to say, when I thought of that person, I smiled. And from Jordan, who sent this to Joellen the other night and asked Joellen to share it with me, and I want to share it. Is it okay? I'm going to read this. I don't have a single bad memory of my grandfather. I don't remember ever feeling upset or angry or annoyed when I was with him. I only felt safety and unconditional love. He brought joy to everyone around him. He understood gratitude implicitly. He rarely complained. I will miss him endlessly. But I know he felt our love in his final moments. He is at peace now and his energy is a part of all of us. I will never let that go. Indeed, Sid's energy is with all of you and with all of us. Zifranoli Bracha, the memory of a good and a righteous man is forever a blessing to all who knew him and to all who loved him. Please rise. El male rachami shoke bam romi am se menucha nechona tahat kanfe hashkina im kedoshi mutahorim kizoar harakia maziri. Ed Nishmato, Shlomo Mendel, Ben Nusen Halevi, Shahalach Le Olamo, the Ganeid and the Hemenuchato, Ana Balha Rachami, Asli Rehu Beset Ekanafecha Le Olamim, Vayitz Ror Vitra Chaim, Ed Nishmato. Adonai hu nachalato v'yanuach b'shalom al mishkavo v'nomar Amen. Passionate God, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence <coughs> to Shlomo Mendel ben Nussen Halevi, to Sidney Milton Cornrich, for he has now entered eternity. O God of mercy, we pray, may Sid find refuge in your eternal presence, and may his soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God is his inheritance. May he rest in peace. And we say, Amen. We will conclude our service in just a moment with the recitation of Mourner's Kaddish. Following Kaddish, 
the family of those who wish can take part in fulfilling the mitzvah of Chesed Shel Emet, the final kindness we perform for one we love, and that is by involving ourselves in their burial. Our tradition recognizes that this is emotionally the most difficult mitzvah there is to perform, to take part in the burial of one we love, but we are called to do so as a way to honor our loved ones, to pay tribute to them. And so following Mourner's Kaddish, I'm going to ask the family, those who wish to take a shovel full of earth and place it into the grave. It is customary to not pass the shovel from person to person, but to return the shovel, in this case, to the wheelbarrow, and then let the next person pick it up so that they can complete the mitzvah in its fullness. Once the family has had a chance to place earth in the grave and fulfill this mitzvah, we're going to give the cemetery staff a few minutes to place the liner on top of the grave, and then anyone else who wishes can place earth into the grave after that. But because of the number of people here, we're going to have to place the liner on before we have everyone here fulfill that mitzvah. Sid's family will observe Shiva this afternoon from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. They will not be returning to Beachmont immediately after service, but give them a little breather, and this afternoon, starting at 3.30, they'll be at Beachmont Country Club. I imagine that that was the plan all along, but I think with the closing of Corky and Lenny's, you can't get a shiva tray in this town. <laughs> and so Beachmont's going to stand in. For those who might wish to honor Sid's memory with a charitable contribution, the family suggests that you direct your generosity either to the Cleveland Jewish Federation or to In Motion. It is, of course, customary for the mourners to recite Kaddish, but I invite everyone present in Sid's memory to join with them in reciting the mourners Kaddish. Yitkadal, v'yitkadash, shemei rabah, v'yalmah divrah sherutei v'yamlich machutei, v'chayechon v'yomechon v'chayei dechal beit Yisrael, v'agalah v'vizman kari v'yiru amein. Yeheshme Rabba Mibarach Le Olam Olome Omaya. Yit Barak the Yishtabach, Yit Paar, Vit Romam, Vit Nase. Vit Hadar, Vit Ale, Vit Tamal, Shame, Vit Hisham, Riki. The Elamin Kal Birkata, Vishirata, Kushpata, the Nechamata. The Amiran Vialma, Viru Amen. Yehesh Lama Rabba Min Shemaya. The Chaim Aleno Vial Kol Yisrael, Viru Amen. Ose shalom bim romav, hu ya ase shalom, aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael bim ru amen. We close our service with these traditional words of consolation. Amakom yinachem etchem v'tok shar av le'zion v'yerushalayim. May God grant you comfort, and may you who mourn be comforted along with all the mourners in Zion and Jerusalem. Family's going to place her first, and then we'll cover.
see you, man. to everybody. I'll come over and see you guys. I saw Ben recently. Did you? Ran into each other.